You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You News Edition. Today we've got a lot of news talking about aircraft, rumors. There's so much to talk about in what's coming down the line as far as equipment is concerned. In other news, it looks like, well, the smart controller for DJI might unlock a lot of features for the Mavic Air 2. In addition, it looks like Amazon is now creating training simulators for their drones. And it looks like one drone company is once again trying to create a PR stir. Hiya, all this news and so much more. It's really exciting, but uh, welcome to the show again, my friend. How are you? Very good, man. Thank you for having me on the show today. Definitely. There's a lot of news to talk about. And right away, let's get into, it looks like I see here on the first piece of news that there might be a Mavic Mini 2, a micro drone. What's going on here? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, updates on DJI rumors. It's been kind of quiet about DJI and new products that were coming out. I mean, apart from the Ronin products, we haven't really seen all that much. However, we were able to talk to somebody within DJI in China, and uh, here's the updates on a number of products for you. First of all, the Ronin RS2 and the Ronin RSC2 are expected to uh, hit the market uh, towards the end of October, so I think October 22nd. We're not quite sure on the specs of these stabilized gimbals yet, but we do expect them to be quite a bit lighter, more powerful, and of course offer new uh, technological breakthroughs and new features. So if you're using gimbals, then I think this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Then moving on to the DJI Mavic Mini 2, apparently Frank Wang, who's the CEO and co-founder of DJI, uh, was not happy at all with the video quality of the original DJI Mavic Mini, and I would totally agree with him on this one. A lot of people were very disappointed that, for instance, the original Mavic Mini, and and it's an awesome drone in the fact that it's so small and so lightweight, and you can fly it in certain locations at least with uh, fewer restrictions. But with a DJI Osmo Action and a DJI Osmo Pocket offering 4K video quality, a lot of people were wondering why the heck the DJI Mavic Mini did not offer 4K. Now, again, we don't have any specs on the Mavic Mini 2 yet, but it's safe to say that uh, 4K video quality will probably, very likely, be part of this new drone. There is an 80% chance that we might actually see a new DJI Mavic Mini 2 before the year is over. So don't quite pin us down on this yet. Uh, It might also spill over into 2021, but there's a very good chance that we actually might see this one, uh, I would hope, before Christmas. No FAA jokes here. Uh, So that would be good. Then, of course, the DJI Mavic 3 have that one as well that we've been waiting for forever, it seems. Some bad news here. It does not seem we're going to get that one even in the first month of the new year. Uh, Rumors tell us that it might even be after Q1. So that means we have to wait another six months for this drone to arrive. Now, that sucks to be honest, but it's not really surprising because there's no reason for DJI to come up with a better DJI Mavic drone when there is no real competition and their current models are still selling so well. Uh, The DJI DJI Mavic 2 Pro and the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom are among the favorite drones that people buy, as well as the DJI Mavic Air 2 that came out earlier this year. So there is hardly any outside pressure onto DJI uh, in terms of releasing a Mavic 3. You might say, yeah, but we got the Skydio 2. That's true. Skydio 2 is awesome in certain areas, but they can deliver and sell them fast enough, unfortunately. And uh, as far as Autel is concerned, DJI doesn't see Autel as serious competition is what we've been informed Working our way further down the list, the DJI FPV drone that we have seen one leaked photo from, there might actually be two versions of the DJI FPV drone. Uh, Again, we have no information as of yet as to what those specs are and how those two drones are going to be different, but it was quite a surprise to learn that there might actually be two different versions. So we're working hard trying to dig up some more information on this, and as soon as we do, we'll let you know. Um, Lastly, we have the DJI Osmo Action 2 and the Osmo Pocket 2. 
They might still come before Christmas shopping this year, or they might not. Apparently, they're in the works. We're not quite sure exactly what the release date is going to be. We do know that the DJI Osmo Action is selling quite poorly. And no surprise here, I think uh, GoPro is giving DJI, in this case, a run for their money. Not when it comes to drones, obviously, but when it comes to action cameras, GoPro, they for sure know what they're doing. So, yeah, we'll keep our ear to the ground and see if we can find out some more information. But there's quite a few products potentially still making their way to the market before Christmas from DJI. And I think that in itself is, uh, is quite exciting news. So a new Osmo Pocket and Osmo Mobile, is that right? I mean, that kind of doubles the expectation of what we were expecting to see. Well, potentially. I mean, uh, if these things work in our favor, then potentially we might see a DJI Mavic Mini 2, uh, two FPV drones from DJI, an Osmo Action 2, and an Osmo Pocket 2 before the year's over. Now, again, this is not guaranteed to happen, but if it does, then uh, we would have a flurry of new DJI products right before the shopping season. And um, yeah, that would be nice for sure. Definitely. And moving on to into our next story, it seems like the Mavic... Air 2, which has had some limited functionality with its camera and flying maneuverability, well, may have a new hack to get more out of the drone. Haya, what do you have? Yeah, we finally have a update for the DJI Smart Controller, and it now is able to connect and fly with the DJI Mavic Air 2, which is really nice because a lot of people have been looking forward to this, especially also more professional users that might have a fleet of drones. It's nice to have one controller that kind of rules them all. Uh, also, because now you don't need your phone anymore to fly these drones, and it's always quite annoying when you're flying a drone, you're getting text messages and all that stuff, then you have to shut that off. So to have a dedicated remote controller to fly your drones with, I think is for sure the way to go. This was a highly uh, anticipated release. We knew it was coming. It just took forever for DJI to release this drone. Now, don't forget the smart controller doesn't just work with Mavic drones. It actually also works with the Phantom 4 Pro version too. Keep in mind though, the smart controller is not inexpensive. It's uh, 750, used to be a little cheap before the tariffs kicked in but it's 750 US dollars and also it contains old technology so we're not quite sure if you buy a smart controller today I wouldn't say it's safe to assume that you're future proof with this device I think it's quite likely that DJI at some point will come out with a new and upgraded version that will be a little faster and a little more capable so keep that in mind Wow, Haya. Well, that's honestly really exciting. I mean, I'm excited for that myself. But, you know, to your point about the longevity of that particular unit, it really utilizes the, the best aspects of Crystal Sky and the monitor, which is just using it for photos and videos, not autonomous missions, etc. So I think that there's a lot of value in the smart remote. That said, moving into our next piece of news... It looks like Amazon, well, it might seem that Amazon and the ideologies of Skydio run in parallel as, well, not Skydio, but Amazon is creating, that's right, a training simulator, but not for the pilots. It's for the drone. Haya, what do you have? Yeah, it's actually really cool stuff. Uh, from the European Patent Office, Amazon apparently is working on a simulation system that will fly and or train their autonomous uh, delivery drones to avoid real life obstacles and of course don't get into any crashes. The way it works is you have to picture that a drone is actually fixated on a platform, let's say a table, and then they display with video inputs uh, what the outside world theoretically would look like and then the drone is going to respond to that environment. So it's really a training exercise to program these drones and uh, to improve their flying capabilities so that once we are finally allowed to fly drones fully autonomously and uh, we, well, we need quite a bit more before uh, drone deliveries are going to become routine. But let's say if all those things are in place, then Amazon would have a training and simulation system that would train these drones to be able to avoid any obstacles in the real world and make deliveries to customers within 30 minutes in a very safe and expedited way, which, um, yeah, might take a few years to get there, but I think it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting future to look forward to. It definitely is an exciting future to look forward to. And I will just say I'm excited for the Walmart Plus system. And maybe we might get drone delivery included in that. Who knows? But I agree with you. We're years down the line. 
In our next piece of drone news, though, we're talking about drone delivery. Look, drone delivery has been quite the hot piece of PR. But there was a story that came out this week that has a lot of pilots shaking their heads and questioning what's really going on. And if this is a PR stunt and not actually, well, a viable solution for drone pilots. Haya, what's going on with yeah. Walmart? Uh, it's kind of interesting, like Walmart all of a sudden kind of hit the headlines when it came uh, to the drone industry and all of a sudden they have all this stuff going on and their latest test now is that they're going to deliver COVID-19 test kits by drone, actually inspire two drones, uh, to people at home. And of course, once they've taken the test, they're not going to send it back to Walmart by drone. It's going to be shipped by mail. So that part seems to be taken care of. The interesting thing, though, is that when you, uh, there's a video that we'll show in this uh, new show where you see an Inspire 2 lifting off. And basically, you have a Walmart bag dangling beneath the drone about 10 feet lower, which you might wonder if you make any sudden and abrupt flying uh, maneuvers with the drone, whether you don't get that pendulum swinging effect that actually might throw the drone off balance, or you might get stuck in a power line or a tree branch uh, and things like that. So I'm not quite sure if it's the safest way. Um, it seems a bit of a PR stunt, you're right. They've teamed up with DroneUp in this case to do this test. And of course, as you know, DroneUp uh, only uses the most qualified and most experienced drone pilots. So we should be in good hands there. And furthermore, Walmart definitely is taking a gamble with this one because it's happening in North Las Vegas. So we'll keep our eyes on this one, but I'm not quite sure if I uh, see this going forward on a larger scale nationwide, to be honest. Yeah, you bring up a lot of good points, right? Carrying of hazardous materials. So you brought that up, right? The test kits are only being sent one way. How viable really is this system? Point number two you brought up is the fact that the bag was sitting three or four or five feet below the Inspire 2, which you're right. That drags the center of gravity down to a very unsafe place. In addition, it did not look like an autonomous system. It looked like the drone was flying around with the bag that low. And uh, Haya, it seems like you're being quite sarcastic when you discuss that company's quality pilots. Am I reading that right? Um, I think you might be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, I think it's important to be honest in this industry because hyping has really hurt all of us. And uh, I think it's uh, hurt the industry overall. So I appreciate the fact that you're like, Hey, look, uh, we may want to take a second look at this piece of news because if we look at the specifics and the proof in the pudding, it really makes you question whether this drone delivery is really going on whatsoever. In addition, Haya, I heard a rumor that uh, this company working with Walmart is going to be essentially farming out these drone delivery jobs, kind of like how drone base farms out roof inspection jobs and real estate jobs, you know, those, those low barrier to entry jobs. Yeah. Um, is that true? I'm not sure. Um, that might be the case. But again, I, I don't see them rolling this out on a large scale. I mean, this I don't think would be the way to do it. I mean, you're not just going to use an Inspire drone with some bag dangling 10 feet below it. And then, I mean, also, if you look at the photos, uh, the setup that they have, like they have a van with all the equipment, the table, there's at least three people involved in, in making this work. It seems very much like something that's been thrown together quickly to show like, hey, this is something that we might be able to do going forward. Yes, but I, I don't think this is the way how you would do it. I think you need a, a more automated and a more professional way of delivering packages that's safer, but also more scalable. And I, I don't see those. Uh, I don't see those features in the video and in the photos we've seen so far. Gotcha. Well, thank you for the honesty. I, I know all of us and myself included appreciate it. But I think that's going to do it for this week's drone news. Um, I'm really excited about this Mavic Mini 2, Haya, because I hear it may not be the only small-scale drone that DJI is dropping this year. Is that right? Yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed. I mean, um, I was actually quite impressed with the uh, original DJI Mavic Mini. I mean, yeah, the, the photo quality, the video quality leaves some to be desired, but the fact that you have such a small, lightweight drone is pretty awesome to have. So we'll see what happens, fingers crossed. Hopefully we get some new DJI products before the year is over. 
Definitely. I, uh, I hope that the Mavic Mini 2 uh, provides a little bit more pilot control because I think you could do so much more with that drone if you could control more with it. I do like the idea of having that small of a drone. It is very useful. I would just say, Haya, that I would love to see, you know, a true Addy mode. I launched that Addy mode video on the Mavic Mini to try to see who would copy us and not pick up the, the squirmy little details. Uh, the yeah. fact that you have to put the tape below the sensors on the bottom of that aircraft to get it to actually go into attitude mode. And I would love to see the new rendition just have a little bit more functionality because I think it's a, I think that there is a movement towards micro drones because of the regulatory environment. I think DJI sees that as well. And if remote ID comes out and we can fly drones at 250 grams and ignore most of these rules, then you might be seeing a lot of drones coming out that all of a sudden weigh less than 250 grams, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, and I think if you look at some of the other DJI products, I mean, um, especially the products where we've seen multiple generations, you see that DJI typically brings a lot more uh, in terms of features with the new generation products. They refine the product itself, making it more compact, more streamlined, uh, lighter. And then thirdly, they typically make them less expensive as well. So I think if we're going to see a DJI Mavic Mini this year, it might not just be the video quality that gets upgraded. I think you might see actually a number of upgrades because I'm sure they've learned quite a bit since launching that mini drone last year. Yeah, I'm sure that they have learned quite a lot. Well, we're excited, Haya. Thanks for bringing all this news to us and so much more. I know you are, uh, as Bloomberg, you know, they always say 120 journalists in 120 countries. We got two journalists <laughs> in one country and we in write just as much news and it's all Haya. So <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, anyway, Haya, so thank you again. Really do appreciate it, brother. Awesome. Thank you, man, for having me on the show and uh, see you guys soon in the next one. Sounds good. Well, thanks again, everyone. Please don't forget to leave us a review. Smash that subscribe button and let us know what you like and what you don't like. But that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for joining us for another news edition of Ask Drone You.